U.S. general elections are here. And what's more interesting is that this time there's also involvement of Elon Musk. Whom is he supporting? Either Biden or he is with Trump? Because frontrunners' candidates are going to be the same as in 2020. And in the history of 253 years of U.S., this is going to be the first rematch election in almost 70 years. And it's Biden versus Trump again. But this isn't not as simple as it looks. The election campaigns are taking curves every time. It is clear that leader with most support wins in the end. But at this time, the situation seems to be worsened. Elon Musk has taken a very strict decision regarding the elections. Do you want to know what it is? Don't worry, we have got all the news covered in this video today. So stick to the end so you don't miss any single update about it. Hello, viewers. Welcome back to our channel, GeoKit, your daily guide to geopolitical affairs. In this video, we will discuss about U.S. elections, taking new turns, about public support, and whom does Musk supports. Watch the video until the end to know about situation amid election campaigns in the U.S. So, without any delay, let's get started. First of all, let's be clear that Trump belongs to the Republican Party and Biden to the Democratic Party. These both candidates are the front runners for the presidential seat. On November 5th, Americans will elect their next president. Joe Biden, the current president, doesn't really have any strong competition for the Democratic nomination, while his opponent, Donald Trump, looks like he's pretty much going to win the Republican nomination again. After he lost the previous election, Trump's supporters tried to overturn the result. He faces federal charges over his alleged participation in that scheme, as well as three other criminal cases. Mr. Biden's presidency has been defined by high inflation, big industrial policy bills and turmoil abroad in Afghanistan, Ukraine, and the Middle East. Both candidates aren't really liked by everyone, the election is going to be more about who people think is less not good than who they really love. The election is still many months away, but with the two candidates now in effect decided, the real campaigning can start. Joe Biden, at 81, will be the oldest ever major party presidential candidate. Biden, more unpopular than ever, only about 38% of people are saying they like what he's doing. 10% of those who voted for him in 2020 now say they will vote for Trump and the demographic picture the poll paints is dire. Not only for Biden, but perhaps for the whole Democratic Party. While Trump drew a significant amount of media attention over the weekend, and that put Trump ahead by five points, with 48% compared to Biden's 43%. That's the largest lead Trump has ever held since he launched his first presidential campaign in 2015. The Biden campaign's response to these numbers has been simple. All of the polls are wrong. They believe polling doesn't really match up with how people actually vote, and it tends to make Trump look better than he really is. Most voters haven't paid attention to these policy debates, and they say the Biden's biggest problem is something you can see right on his face. According to the New York Times poll, 73% of registered voters say he's too old to effectively serve as president. Biden has been trolled several times for forgetting names and dates, and as much as Democrats might want to blame the media, for that perception of how they see Biden, many of them foresaw this problem themselves during the last campaign. If Biden is elected, he's going to be 82 years old in four years and he won't be running for re-election. Robert Hur in an event said that Biden could not recall the year his vice presidency began or when his son Beau died, which Biden has denied. Biden's age also came up during his 2020 campaign when he was 77, but polling suggests that Americans' concern has grown during his time in office. Mitch Landrio, who's the co-chair of Biden's re-election campaign, said that it's not about numerical age, it's about the age of his ideas. Furthermore, he said that when Biden says, watch me, he's not saying watch me do 20 push-ups. He's 81 years old. This is not about muscle. It's about intellect, wisdom, and character. When people have a choice between him and Donald Trump, I believe the public is going to choose wisdom and experience instead of Trump, who looks like he had a couple of extra Big Macs. All that aside, faith in Biden's capacity to lead and accomplish will rest in some part on. And when the situation in Gaza comes to a peaceable resolution, getting a handle on the situation and pressuring Netanyahu into ending the war would be a significant turning point in his presidency. There and elsewhere, Biden needs to find a new course. Otherwise, the election may be over before he realizes it. Apart from this, immigration is still at the front of mind for many voters. 
Biden has admitted that Trump has been right about the situation at the border. Even though immigrants are usually less likely to commit crimes compared to native people, and they're a big part of why the economy is doing well, Democrats are trying their best to seem even tougher on border security and asylum, but to little effect only, instead of directly challenging the racist ideas Trump spread, they're trying to show they're just as tough on immigration, rather than focusing on a positive plan to reform immigration. Former President Donald Trump is in trouble with law. He was charged in four criminal cases. In Washington, D.C., he faces four serious charges for his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. In Georgia, he's facing 13 charges for his election interference in that state. In New York, he faces 34 charges for paying hush money, $130,000, to an adult movie star, Stormy Daniels, for keeping quiet about their affair. And in Florida, he's facing 40 charges for keeping classified documents after he left office and making it hard for the government to retrieve them back. But Trump denies all these wrongdoings. However, Trump has denied all wrongdoings regarding his cases, but still these court cases have also been a financial drain for him, spending more than $1.50 million just in a single year, 2023. I'd like to hear from you. Are you finding this video informative? Feel free to share your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. And if you're finding it helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. Your support means a lot to us and helps us reach a wider audience and the content that you'll love. Let's continue this journey together. When it comes to money for the big election, Biden's got a lot more in his pocket. He started February with a whopping $130 million for his campaign. Trump, on the other hand, had only about $30.4 million, so Biden's got a big advantage there. But Trump is not from those who remain calm in these situations although he wants to win elections at any cost and to overcome the financial problem for this election campaigning. For that, he met with Elon Musk in Florida on the 5th of March. As a former president, he is seeking to get more money for his campaign. Musk, who is worth $192 billion, doesn't like Biden's policies, particularly regarding the immigrant situation at the U.S.-Mexico border. In 2022, Musk asked Americans to elect a Republican candidate to counter Biden's Democrats. He said something like Biden's trying to get migrants to come to the U.S. so they can vote for Democrats, even though people who aren't citizens of the U.S. can't actually vote in federal elections. A day after meeting of Musk and Trump, Musk announced on X that he will not donate money to any of the candidates in this year's election, as he hasn't really spent much money on politics, donating less than $1 million since 2009. And this is bad news for Trump, because he's already behind on money for election rematch with Biden. To save Trump's chance for the president, his last Republican rival, Nikki Haley, quit the race to secure nomination for the Trump. Lauren Hitt, a spokeswoman for Biden's campaign, welcomed Musk's decision, saying that we are not worried because our grassroots fundraising is going great, so we're good. But she criticized that someone should check in on Donald Trump's lawyers because they might be worried about not getting paid again. Now, what do you think that how Trump will be raised funding for his campaign? Will he quit in this election? How will he be able to tackle next court hearings despite not having enough money in the hand? Will he go to the hearings or prioritize elections for his presidency? Let us know your opinions in the comments section and don't forget to share the video and like and click on the subscribe button as we will be updating you about the elections. Until next video, stay tuned.